Namaste guys, I'm going to cover today Mercury transits around houses. Now, unless you were born on the Mercury retrograde, then you could check this video and look it up as a, a guide to how it's going to be when you have your Mercury transits. Because when you are born on a Mercury retrograde, uh, you are actually on the element of the retrograde and you flow much better than when you do when, you're, when it's a normal transit of Mercury. So you have to look up to see if you were born under a Mercury retrograde or not, and Mercury usually goes retrograde three times a year. Now, Mercury is the god of duality. It's a hermaphroditus, like male and female, so it communicates in a way that everybody understands because it communicates as a male and a female. It's, you know, it's dual. It, it's very flexible. So that's why it, it, it's represented by a hermaphrodite, because it's, it, could, it doesn't signify a specific sex. It could be anything, all right? So, uh, when, as I explained in my other Mercury retrograde video, that Mercury pertains to transportation, communication, anything that pertains to going from point A to point B. When he is transiting your houses, what he's really doing is he's amplifying that movement. Now, when Mercury transits your first house of self, your mentality is going to focus more about your I am, your inner self. Okay, because the first house is uh, governed by Aries, and Aries is the ego. The I am. So you're gonna you're gonna find yourself. You're gonna find your inner dialogue saying a lot of times, "I am this, I am that, I am. I'm going to." You see, that's when Mercury goes into your first house of self. So you will be seeing ego-like activity when it transits your first house. Now, when Mercury transits your second house of money, is I have. Okay, I have this. I have a new car. That is the ego of the second house because it's Taurus. Okay, it's possession, it's material. So you're going to find yourself saying or asking yourself, do I have this or do I have that? You know, that's your mentality uh, mind frame. When Mercury transits your third house of communication, which is on its element, it's a Gemini house, you're going to be asked, your, your ego is going to sound more like I think. Okay, so you're going to be working a lot with uh, I think about this, I think about that. Uh, I think this is good, I think this is bad. So you're going to be very opinionated when it goes into your third house. Okay. When Mercury goes into your fourth house, which is a Cancer house, it's going to tap into I feel. So your ego is going to sound more like, I feel like doing this, I don't feel like doing that. Uh, that's the, the inner dialogue that you're going to experience when Mercury goes into your fourth house. When Mercury goes into your fifth house, you're going to, your ego is going to sound like I create because the fifth house pertains to Leo, the creator. So it's like, you know, you're going to be feeling very creative at this time and your mentality is going to be geared towards creating stuff. Now, when Mercury goes into your sixth house, it is the house that occupies Virgo. So your inner dialogue will sound more like I serve. You're going to ask yourself, where am I serving, you know, the, the world? Where am I contributing my energy to? So it's your mentality is going to revolve around serving. When Mercury enters your seventh house of relationships, now Libra is now Libra rules this house because it pertains to balance. Your inner dialogue will sound more like I judge or I weigh. Because you have to weigh things when you're in a relationship. You can't take too much and you can't give too much. You have to be balanced. When Mercury goes into your eighth house, your ego is going to sound like, I control. I control because the eighth house rules Scorpio, and Scorpio is about control. So um, when Mercury, the mentality goes into the eighth house, uh, you're going to be asking yourself, what am I really in control of? You know, because the eighth house deals with the in-laws, other people, that where is my control? That is when Mercury goes into your eighth house. Now, when Mercury goes into your ninth house, you're going to your ego is going to sound like I philosophize, because it, it's the house of Sagittarius, and it's the house of higher knowledge. So you're going to be very philosophical. When Mercury transits the tenth house, your ego is going to sound like I master. Okay. Now I have my Mercury in, in my natal Mercury in Capricorn, and I'm always saying I master this, I master that. That's just how my ego works. So when your Mercury goes into your 10th house, you're going to say, I master this, I master that. What are you mastering in your life? Because Capricorn pertains to career and reputation. 
So what are you the master of? When Mercury transits your 11th house, the ego sounds like this. I universalize, meaning I put everything together. After analyzing everything, I put everything together. So when Mercury goes into your 11th house, you're going to, your ego is going to be um, coming into like a big conclusion about everything and about the future. And you're going to dwell on that and, you know, be more social because that's, that's the house of Aquarius. You're going to be more, uh, you know, into social opinions and, and, and that's just how your mind's going to be working. It's, it's going to be working at that level of, you know, analyzing things as a whole. Now, when Mercury goes into your 12th house, it's, I believe, because this is a house of faith, because you don't really know what's going to happen in the 12th house, so you really have to leave it up to, I believe, okay, because it, anything could happen, and it's a, it's a blind spot, and you really don't have a clue what's going to happen, so you really have a lot of faith during this time. This is like the house of hope, okay, people that are born with natal Mercury here, um, they're always hoping for things. Because their ego naturally says, I hope. Now, of course, when Mercury goes into each of these houses, the activity of mentalism and, you know, um, energy of flowing things, obviously it, it um, amplifies more because that's what Mercury does. So that's just common sense. When Mercury enters a house, I don't have to tell you that the activity of mentalism is going to be greater than when it was in another, you know, house. You have, you have 12 eagles. I mean, you have more one that's more dominant than the other. But you could activate it at any time, and usually it gets activated when Mercury goes into that sort of house. Okay. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, and Namaste.